Distribution and Warehousing Network, also known as Dawn, manufactures and distributes hardware, sanitary ware, plumbing, kitchen and other products. It has a market cap of 2.2 billion rand and a price to earnings ratio of 16. Now, how is Dawn faring on the share price side of things? Uh, spike well, towards the, the uh, yes. recently. Ian, that, give that us a little detail on that, Dawn. That's what's interesting. This, if you take a line all the way across these highs we've had for the last three to four years, it's testing that right now. So it's a critical, technically a critical phase that it's going through. If it, it's gone up very steeply, so I, I fancy it may need a couple of attempts before it breaks through. If and, and then what, we go back to 15 rand or just well, under 15 rand? Higher anyway. So, so it, it's getting close, but I would be careful of doing something when it's had such a strong run-up as we've seen this year uh, in anticipation of that, because it could be a bit of a wait. So don't bet on a further upside from these levels, given the aggressive mm. rally we've seen. Look, it's an interesting group. Derek Todd, the CEO, built it from a series of acquisitions. Uh, it had some very, very tough years in, in 08, 09. It owns, though, most of the plumbing brands in this country, mm. so not Bath tiles like you know itel tile and not basic building materials it's in the middle there selling things like cobra taps it owns and produces most of the plumber's pipe you know the big diameter one as well as the narrower white one that people use its customers are either retailers or they are direct bucky plumbers and those kinds of people but it's doing well now and it's mm -hmm. recovering after as i say nearly being in uh, insolvency it had a rights issue back in about 2010, I think. Those people that put money in there still haven't made money yet, I don't think. So it's kind of on the recovery. I saw the CEO, Derek Todd, on the channel a couple of weeks ago. With He's results. not a friend. Is he a friend? No, I don't know him at all. And <laughs> it seems to be doing quite nicely. So I think it's time again to get interested in this story and then in the stock. Is there interest from your side as well, Ian? There's a good vertical integration of products and they're able to, to, to sell, to produce and sell within the group as well as outside of the group, which makes it interesting. But I, I just, I'm just, uh, wouldn't be keen on doing anything on it right now when we see it's had such a strong run-up. It's one to be bought, I would say, in the next course of the next year on any pullback in this short-term trading range. Do you see. anticipate a, a pullback, Paul? I don't know. You see, the problem at the moment with the sort of consumer demand story, as we've been hearing, is that the top end of the market is doing quite well. So people with money to spend on a renovation of a middle class house have probably got the cash because bonds are available again. But at the lower end of the market, people doing basic building and extensions and room additions, that's not doing well. So we see Builders Warehouse doing well, but cash bill doing badly. So I don't know, I think the picture is still a bit mixed and it's probably a good idea to wait, I think, another six months before getting too excited. But it certainly does look as though the problems of the past are behind them. With a fragmented environment, there are a number of players in this uh, sector. Do you anticipate some consolidation down the line? I think they've seen some of that. I think a number of the competitors have simply gone out of business. It's been a heck of a tough environment the last three years, and they've survived. They've got over some tough times, as Paul just said. So those and survivors aren't going anywhere anytime soon? No, and probably not coming back because the recovery is not going to be wildly goes for exciting just in the short term. So pedestrian performance you yes. are anticipating from these players? One more thing, these kinds of businesses are susceptible to the RAND. You know, the RAND mm. catches them out. Why? Because they've got some load of, you know, Cobra Taps being manufactured somewhere up some river in China and it's on the water here and suddenly the RAND moves 30 or 50 or 60 cents in one way or another and the whole thing becomes sub-economic or otherwise. That's why they have to decide, do I manufacture locally in South Africa, do I import, there are all those kinds of dynamics. Having said that, they've all prof you know, become quite professional at managing these disasters and dilemmas. So they are in a position to sort of bob and weave and so on. I think they can do okay, as long as the RAND doesn't get yeah. you know, difficult again. Well, le let's not talk about the RAND. <laughs> we'll have a whole show on the RAND because I think the RAND is very difficult. Yes. It's very volatile, we yes. know. Hot or not, Ian, on no, board? Not Hot or not, Paul, mm, on Dawn? I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say hot, because I've been told I need to be more hot on more things.